Hello, this is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University, and we're going to finish up the Molecule Viewer in Paper Vision 3D and Flex 3. And I want to go back real quick and talk about the color piece of the Molecule Builder. Here's our benzene molecule once again in Paper Vision. And what we want to do is actually deal with these colors right here and how I actually came up with the textures and uh, came up with the colors for this scheme. Right now you only have basic white and gray because that's the benzene molecules carbon and uh, uh, hydrogen and those molecules uh, colors come from the CPK uh, colors which we referred to earlier. So if you go to the CPK uh, colors uh, site and you scroll down here you can see the actual uh, RGB uh, values are given for the different colors like gray, red for oxygen, white for hydrogen, light blue for nitrogen, and I actually have the RGB colors. And so I'm actually going to go to Second Life and uh, basically type in these different colors and grab them with Snagit and place them in a folder and use those to overlay my molecules. Very simple process. And I'm going to use Second Life because, well, it was easy and I, I, I have a number of tutorials on Second Life, so let's go take a look at that real quick. So I'm in Second Life right now and really all I need to do is basically res a cube. So I'll just come here and res a cube real quick. There you go. And I have the opportunity to go to objects or texture, excuse me, or there you go, and click on colors. And there's my color scheme right there. So I actually come along here and I can put in different colors. So I'm going to go back to my molecule site. So I'm back on the CPK color site and I'm going to look, for example, let's take a look at nitrogen, which is 143, 143, 255. I can come along here and put that into my second life. Just come along here and put in 143. 143 and 255 is already in there and there's my light blue and I'm gonna just move this down a little bit so you can actually see that here it is right here all I have to do now is grab this color and snag it so I'm gonna open up snag it I probably use snag it three or four times a day it's extremely useful I'm gonna come along here and look at that blue uh, uh, color that I created and just gonna go 59 by 59 and the, you can see my pixels are coming up and I'll let go and then I'll just give it a name so just save that color so you go ahead and save this color just call it light blue for example and uh, once it's saved I've already saved it no reason to do it again and you can see I've actually gone through here and saved all the different colors for the elements uh, in the CPK site so let's get out of that and from that colored folders, I've actually just dropped that into Flex. So let's take a look at that real quick. So if I go back to my uh, site, you can see in my source folder, I have a colors folder, and there's all those different colors. And so now that I have all those different colors, these can be placed onto the molecules. And go, let's, so let's take a look at the program. So we can see as a different... Uh, elements are being brought through the switch case the colors are being pulled from the uh, f colors folder and the different colors white gray red are wrapped onto the molecules how are those wrapped onto the molecules let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick the sphere is created and then the color material my color is brought in as a bitmap file material so it's that easy to work with the colors now we're going to discuss the rest of the code uh, we're not going to go through it line by line as I said earlier but we're going to talk about how it was built now let's talk about how the code was written. I'm not going to go through it line by line. Uh, you can go through my previous uh, paper vision tutorials and get an overview of how we build paper vision. This is gives you an overview of how this code was built and this is enough. If you go and download that source code and look at this tutorial, you should have no problems in getting this running for yourself. Uh, the heart of this uh, program, obviously, is the HTTP service command, which brings in the benzene molecule. There you go, data, and that data is used to populate the uh, paper vision. Uh, layout and so first what happens is is when the application tag is run you can see this application complete initializes and when this, what happens this initialization is is this HTTP service command is fired and when that command is fired then the uh, result handler one actually right here result handler one is executed so let's take a look at those pieces of code of course as we scroll down here you can see all the typical uh, paper vision imports that are required to make this program run and we've talked about those in previous tutorials here's our initiation function and you have this uh, molecule position dot send is initialized and also you have this mouse pointer uh, um, 
command that is executed as well. And all this comes from the Suite 75 uh, tutorial as far as the mouse interactivity. I really didn't do a whole lot. Most of that code was just ready to go. I just cut and paste what I needed into my program. Now, another thing about programming is you don't necessarily have to be a great programmer to start doing great stuff. Just learn to hack code. You know, go in there and learn how to manipulate and change code to get to do what you need to do. And as you do that more and more, you'll gain more experience and then you'll become a great coder. Hey, nothing long, wrong with hacking. Just acknowledge those people that you hack from. Okay, so let's go down a little bit more. And then once that happens, it causes the uh, result handler to be initialized. Let's take a look at that. And here's my result handler. And in that, I'm going to grab the data from uh, the actual array. That's the benzemarray.xml file. And then I'm initialize the 3D scene. Let's go back and take a look at the initialization of the 3D scene. Here it is right here. All classic paper vision stuff. We're bringing in the viewport, the uh, 3D canvas. Um, we're going to do the renderer. We're going to get the scene. And this is all stuff you've seen in the previous tutorials. One unique new thing, though, however, is I've added a drop shadow. So if you go back and take a look at that molecule, you can see it actually has a drop shadow on it. Let's do that right now. So when I wrote this program, I thought that benzene looked kind of plain, and I didn't have time to put another molecule in there with different colors. So um, I put a drop shadow on it to make it look a little bit better. And you see that drop shadow right there along the edge there. And you actually can control the properties, how big you want it, and what the color is, and what the alpha is. So it's really nice to do that in paper vision. I think it gives it a cool effect, and does define a little bit better. So that's where the drop shadow function comes in. <laughs> I was really excited to put it in there. So, and then you have two more functions, create objects and add listeners. And we've seen these two functions before in previous code. I'm going to actually hit my control key and roll over create objects. We'll look at that. And that's where we have our switch case, and it begins deciding what the atoms are and what the colors are. And that's pulled in once again from the XML file we discussed earlier. And it's really, really simple. It's just grabbing a sphere, uh, putting on that color material that we pulled in, grabbing that atomic radii that we discussed, and uh, I'm giving it a 1414. Basically, that's the number of uh, polygons I have with the horizontal and vertical of the sphere. And then I just start putting the X, Y, and Z positions that come directly from the um, benzene file. And you can see it's called, very easy to do in XML. You see it's called dot M, my X, my Y, my Z. So if we go back to the XML, you can see that's the name of the tags, my X, my Y, my Z. And that's the benefit of the new E. For X, uh, XML, you no longer have to use the uh, child notation. You can basically reference the data directly with the XML tag, and that is super cool and flex. Just love it, love it, love it. And so all it does is adds those uh, molecules to the scene, and you just plot it your, uh, your molecule. Very, very simple. The next uh, function was the add listeners, and we wanted to mouse down, a mouse up, a mouse move, and we also have some keyboard activity here and the render frame. So we got our renderer running. Let's take a look at that renderer real quick. And what's important here is that frustum camera is going to be rendered. And we have four uh, elements here, the cam target, the cam pitch, the cam yaw, and the cam distance. And then we're rendering our scene, camera, and view. So in addition to the other programs that we've written before with this frustum camera, we have now another line of code here. And let's take a look at that camera object next. So in order to populate the elements of my cam function, I need these uh, uh, mouse positions versus the stage positions. And uh, this code pretty much was brought from the Suite uh, 75. I actually modified a little bit, but pretty much the same. And as you move around the particular molecule, you actually uh, want it to change its position. And I want to just encourage you just take a look at the code. It's, it's very straightforward. You've got the yaw position, you've got the pitch position, and you have some restrictions on pitch here since it does not operate the same as yaw does. And um, then again, you're looking at the last point that you dragged on and dragging again. I found this extremely useful, fun code. I'll probably use this over and over again in work that I do in the future. And thanks to Sweet75 for uh, doing that for us. And below are all the uh, mouse activities as well. Let's look at one more thing as far as the code is concerned. This code, once again, is base code to get you started, to get you working in uh, this particular uh, activity. And I have two parameters here, the radius size, uh, which is a basically a, a proportionality constant, and the distance, which is another proportionality constant. This proportionality constant, called mole, molt one, basically just changes the size of the balls. 
And this uh, distance constant uh, basically proportionalizes the, the distance as well, so it looks right. Uh, if you go to a different molecule like methane, it won't look right. You'll have to change these proportionality constants. So it needs some work here as far as getting these right and getting the right atomic radii in there, and probably a little bit more work done in the switch case. But this is the base code. This is enough to get you started and rolling. Uh, it's uh, how long? How it's 439 lines of code, and uh, actually I, I wrote this in uh, basically half a day. <laughs> Extremely easy to work with and fun, and has a lot of potential because you can actually bring now these molecules directly into the browser, and with all the dynamic uh, components of Flex, you can do tutorials, you can do views, you can do uh, you know virtual views of molecules. I mean, just the sky's the limit here. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I hope you get some use out of it. And if you do, just let me know. Uh, and uh, thanks a lot for uh, uh, viewing.